So for the last three or four months, I have been posting a reel on Instagram and a video on TikTok every single day. And one of the most common questions I actually get asked is how do I film my short form content? So that's what I'm gonna answer in today's video. I've made a shorter, very, very short form video about this subject. It's actually one of my best performing YouTube shorts on this channel. It's a very, very simple setup and it's very, very outdated as well because I don't even have that camera or lens set up anymore. I'm not even in that studio. So I'm gonna be showing you two things today. One of those is my short form content strategy when it comes to Instagram, TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And the second is how I actually film my short form content. Let's get into the video. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing safe and well. It's nice to meet you if we're just meeting. My name is Connor Wells. I am a photographer, videographer and podcast producer and I make videos for both short and long about those subjects every single week. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. So let's actually start off with my short form content strategy. Now I focus really on three things when it comes to my short form content. I've got sort of three kind of types that I make and I'm gonna be breaking them down for you. So the first one is probably my favorite type to produce and that is behind the scenes content. What I will do is I'll set up my phone or my second camera, we'll get onto that in a moment, and I'll just let it run on a tripod or sort of like a mini vlog talking to camera and I'll be capturing the behind the scenes of when I'm on set or when I'm doing photo shoots or video shoots to show people what it's like on a video or photo session with me. This sort of short form content is what I use to market myself, market my business and get people to book shoots with me. So today I'm in London, I'm filming two podcasts and another YouTube video. I'm gonna show you a little behind the scenes of the setup. Now. It is the least well-performing content on my socials when it comes to shorts, Instagram reels, and TikToks. Occasionally, some of them will sort of get a decent amount of views. It really, really depends on how I edit it. I've been trying to edit these like little mini vlogs of behind the scenes quite fast. So, you know, a cut every one or two seconds seems to help with the performance of those videos. The second type of video is how-to content. Now in that short form content, it is me talking directly to my audience through the camera and doing a how-to video, whether it's about photography business or how to get more clients, money tips, and photography techniques. These videos are the ones that give people the most value. And they probably perform around in the middle area of my short form content. They get quite a few shares. They also get very, very good watch time. I subtitle all of them because as you know, most people watch YouTube shorts and short form content on mute. So it helps to have subtitles. And that's always quite fun. I like talking to camera. And now the last piece of short form content that I make, I'm just gonna call it shit posting. That's the best way to describe it. What I'll do there is I'll basically lip sync to trending sounds on Instagram and TikTok, as you can see here. One more thing, Eugene, give me that. If I ever find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking God, I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. Now, these videos don't really serve any other purpose than to be funny and get shares, get views and likes and comments. These videos, annoyingly perform the best. They're not my favorite videos to make, but Instagram is Instagram and the game is the game and you have to play it. So I focus on those three ways of creating content. Again, behind the scenes, how-to videos, and yeah, shit posting. Now, most people, most small businesses, most individuals will film their short form content on their phone. Now, as a photographer and a videographer, I kind of feel like first impressions matter and from what people see on a surface level is gonna be their standing opinion of you. So I actually like to film all of my content on my camera and I'm going to be showing you that setup now. But before I do that, I'm going to say I don't always film all of my content on my camera. Sometimes I will if I've got my phone at hand, I will literally just film something on my phone. This is the iPhone 13 Pro. Most of the time I use cinematic mode and this is more for like the run and gun stuff. If I think of a video idea on the spot, whether it's a how to or a behind the scenes, I will literally just film it and just upload it. No color grading, no real editing. It's more on the go, you know, on the fly, run and gun. So I've just recorded a new YouTube video. Here is my setup. I put my phone here. Obviously I'm using it at the moment. Hello. This is my teleprompter for my script. I've got a little feel world monitor up there so I can actually see myself because the flip out screen's in the way. 
Sony A7 IV, Sigma 24-70 F2, a Rode Wireless Go, and then I've got a little lapel mic. I don't really try to deep my content that much. It's, I don't think too much about it. I just put out what I want to put out and what my audience wants to see as well. Now let's talk about my camera setup and how I actually film my TikToks, Reels, and YouTube Shorts. So this right here is my usual go-to when it comes to filming short form content. What I've got here is the Sony a7 IV. That's what I'm actually filming on right now. And then lens, I've paired it with the Sony 16-35 Zeiss f4 lens i think that's a good lens to have when it comes to short form content a little tip for some reason i don't know why but shots that are filmed wider say at like 24 mil or 16 mil seem to perform the best when it comes to instagram and tiktok not really sure why but that's just something that i've noticed and then microphone wise i will range from the rode video mic pro plus everyone knows this mic is a staple it's a legendary mic in the game and it's great i am thinking about getting maybe the rode video micro the new version it does look great it's a lot smaller than than this setup this is quite chunky especially when i'm out and about filming behind the scenes mini vlogs or if i'm sat down doing a how-to video i will use a rode lavalier go paired with the rode wireless go which is tucked into my trouser pocket right now so let's go through my filming setup and how i actually go about filming and creating my content let's start with the easiest with behind the scenes content what i will literally do is film it all like a vlog i'll put it on a tripod let it run let it capture me if i'm talking to camera i will literally just hold it like this. I don't have a tripod or a gorilla pod. 16 to 35 is wide enough. I don't want to think too much about it. This behind the scenes stuff, I want to create it, but I don't want it to get in the way of the actual project that I'm on, whether it's a photo session or a video shoot. So as it's short form content, obviously I film it all in vertical, in, in portrait. So I will actually film it like this. I'll hold it like this and, and film myself. It saves me a lot of time when it comes to editing, not having to crop it and rotate it so I can literally just talk to camera like that and bring it into Final Cut and edit. The behind the scenes reels and shorts, what I'll do is try and make them as short as possible, but also tell the story, tell the narrative. Like this video here, this was a behind the scenes on a shoot day at a wedding venue. Good morning, it is a shoot day today. Today it is sunny. I'm off to the beautifully stunning Offley Place, an incredible wedding venue. So I thought I'd bring you along, make a little behind the scenes video. I love making these videos. So the drive to Offley Place is actually pretty nice and I was really looking forward to getting the drone up. As you can see, it looks stunning from above. So as you can see, there's a lot of fast cuts. I introduced it at the start here in my office and then the rest, I just voice over it. I just let the camera run and then I'll fill in the narrative and help tell the story of what I was doing that day and you know what I was feeling, what I was seeing. I'll do that all in voiceover because it doesn't take me away from the photo session. All I need to do is just hit record and reposition the tripod to make sure I'm in frame. The next type of short form content, this is probably the second most easiest, arguably easier than this, is the how-to videos. Now, if you've watched my YouTube shorts and short form content before, whether it's Instagram Reels or TikToks, you'll probably know this setup. This is my office, but it's filmed in vertical obviously. Starting a photography business can be a great way to turn your passion for photography into a rewarding career. However, there are a few things that you'll need to do in order to get your photography business up and running. First, you'll need to invest in some quality photography equipment. This doesn't mean you need to break the bank, so I'll use this setup. Sometimes I will switch to the Sigma 24-70, which is what I'm being filmed on right now, as that's an f2.8 lens, if I do want a blurrier background. But again, Sometimes I have found that the less blurrier the background is, the better the video performs as it's more relatable to being filmed on a phone. And with those videos, if I have scripted them and I'm gonna read something word for word, what I'll do is I'll put the script into my phone and put it underneath my lens, which has got a teleprompter attached to it, and I'll literally just read the script and deliver it to camera and edit it up, caption it, subtitle it, and all those sorts of things. Those are pretty simple. The only time it does get a little bit complicated is when I make a seamless loop kind of video. Those can be a little bit tricky as you have to record the start of the video at the end or end of the video at the start. They take a bit of time to create, but again, pretty simple. Now the last piece of content that I create, and that is shit posting. It's arguably the most disposable, the easiest to watch, but 
the slightly trickier to edit and trickier to record. When it comes to creating these sort of lip sync videos, it usually takes me 10, 11 goes to get it perfect, depending on the voiceover that I'm lip syncing, the sound that I'm lip syncing to. If you be the cash, I be the rubber band. Uh, <clears throat> okay. If you be the cash, I be the rubber band. I don't always look like I'm having fun, but believe me, I am having the best time of my life. Man, I got all the favorite bitches say I'm delicious. Boyfriends and girlfriends are gonna come and go, but this is for life. You... So how do I go about choosing sounds? That's a question I get asked a lot. What I'll do is I'll spend about half an hour going through Instagram reels, going through TikToks, and I'll save some sounds. Sounds that I think I can put a caption to that and make that relatable to photographers, videographers, podcast producers, or relatable to myself and running a photography business. What I do then is I do have this mic attached so it can pick up the audio. And the audio, I'll basically go to that sound, let it play, I'll familiarize myself with it, and just have it playing through my phone. And then when I'm ready, I'll hit record and just lip sync and do my performance. In a way, it's sort of like acting because you have to remember your lines. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it takes a few takes. And I will batch shoot these. I'll film anywhere between 10 to 15. It usually takes me about an hour. I try to set aside an hour a week to film these kind of short form videos, whether it's how-to videos or these funny shit posts lip syncing videos. Then once I have finished recording the lip sync videos, I'll bring them all into Final Cut. I'll open up Instagram and get the sounds all downloaded. Just do an Instagram reel to MP3 converter. And then what I have to do then is find the good take and sync it up. It's the most time consuming, ironically, for the shortest form of content, but it's the best performing content. And like I said at the start of the video, the game is the game and you have to play it. Now let's talk video quality. Now I film all of these videos in 4K, but when I export them, I export them in a 1080p timeline to avoid extra Instagram compression. And then what I'll do with those videos is I'll just get them scheduled, get them uploaded into Instagram, into TikTok, into YouTube Shorts, have them in my drafts, and then just post out which one I feel like posting that day. So yeah, that pretty much sums up my short form content strategy and way of doing things. If you've got any questions or you'd like me to make a follow-up video or even like a short form concise version of this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you've got some value from this video, please do hit subscribe. It really does help the channel out and hit like as apparently that's good for the algorithm as well. If you are a creative and are looking for a podcast to relate to please do check out my podcast it's called the creative caffeine podcast you can go find it on spotify and apple podcast and also on youtube as well we've got a youtube channel in that show we talk to photographers videographers and content creators from wedding photographers people who direct music videos dops writers and directors we talk to them every single week go check it out on spotify go check it out wherever you listen to podcasts thank you very much for watching Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.